All right, folks, so this is part B of the cross-slide uh, assembly and installation onto the 20-inch uh, the 10EE. So uh, the previous video got a little bit long. I, I you know, I went over, um, you know, uh, th that whole reassembly process and how the different mechanisms work. Um, so hopefully you get a little insight as to what's going on inside that, you know, relatively complicated uh, hand wheel. Uh, one thing that you'll notice at the end of the video, as I'm demonstrating the uh, the hand wheel going in and out, uh, when I hit the stop, you'll see it looks like the housing is moving, and it actually is. And if you recall previously in the video, you'll see that I only hand tighten the uh, the uh, the base of the hand wheel uh, mounting flange to the uh, cross slide base. So. Uh, it's moving because the screws aren't tight. Um, because I know someone will say, why is that moving? And it, that's why it's moving. So I hope you enjoy the video. Uh, we should be getting very, very close now to putting power on and firing this thing up. So I'm going to do the, this cross slide uh, final uh, assembly that you know, this video has. Then I'm going to do the um, taper attachment, get that mounted up there even though I initially was going to kick that down to the end of the road, but the reason why I want to put it on is I think that I might have some difficulty putting the assembly together uh, with the cross slide on. So if that should happen, I've got to remove all that stuff. Um, you know, I, I want to just get that out of the way. And then we'll move on to putting the tubes into the uh, power supply and getting some power hooked up to it and getting this thing running and, and see what, you know, see how it works. Um, I'm also going to throw the tubes into this 30 inch here and uh, I'm going to demonstrate that running as well. Uh, I don't want to really move uh, the cross slide and the tail stock and, and, uh, and the carriage too much until I take a little bit of time to clean off the ways because you know there's a lot of grime from over the years uh, on there. I, I sprayed them all down with WD-40 just to loosen the grime up and you know get the, uh, the assemblies moving. but. Um, most likely I'm not going to restore this one. So uh, I've talked to a couple people about the future of this particular lathe and um, I think you know most likely it's going to find a new home and it'll be a restoration project for for another ambitious uh, person. So anyway let's get back onto the uh, the 20 inch right over here and we'll get this uh, this thing buttoned up. Thanks again. All right so we're going to start putting this guy together so we're going to take the, uh, this is the geared shaft, here's the thrush washers in there, and let's get those together. So flat washer, a bearing, and another flat washer. Okay, so now we got that together. See if I can get you a little bit better shot of it. All right, so now these guys right here are the pieces that have to go onto this guy that give you that. I just checked on my other lathe. There's three spins that it has to make. So we will let's see how we're how we're doing here. Okay, all right, so very clever. I don't know if you see that. So they stop there, and then when you spin it around the other way, this is going to catch that one. It's going to keep spinning. It's going to catch that one and then bump up against this other pin. So if you look here, you can see this, let's, let's see if we can take a peek at this in a better way. So the first one goes down, it has a tab that sticks up The center one has just a machine flat 
you know, it's ground, just flat on both sides. That one goes down here. And then this one, you see, has got a little tab that right there points down. So that one goes there. And that's what gives you your three rotations. So let me go get a little bit of whey oil to put on here. And then we'll assemble that. So we'll get a little bit of oil down in here. And we'll get some oil in here. Let it seep down. Okay. Feels pretty good. Got some white oil, white, little, white oil on there. All right, so. Okay. Okay. So back at this again. So that I forgot that we have these other parts that have to go on. So you could see what I was talking about before. So I have this screw screwed in, right? Let's find the. Uh, so here we are, right at zero, and you got one, two, three turns right back at zero again. So as long as that that thing is in, you can only do that. So normal operation, that's going to be out, which will allow you to use the lathe normally. But if you're going to do some threading, this is what you're going to want to do. Thread that in. It'll stop every time on zero. Okay. Boy, and it's right on zero too. All right, so we got that. And I'll raise you up a little bit so you can see the top piece here. I know the light over in this section here is not that great. Sorry about that. So now these guys right here, this is the clutch assembly for the, uh, you know, to spin this dial to get your, let's thread this out, so that you can zero your dials and then using the little lock on, on the hand wheel, you can lock it in. So you can see right here, there's a cone right here and a cone right there, meaning surfaces so this guy fits in there. And then this guy, I don't think it really matters which way it goes. That goes on there. And then you'll see this has a little notch and that engages in a little uh, dog that's in there. So for this part, oh, hopefully, yeah, I'm not sure that you're able to see what I'm showing you here. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. So right here, we're going to thread in the, the little lock and then the pin that stops it from coming out. Now the key to this guy is, where do we put it in? So I'm gonna put this part on first. What I'm scratching my head about right now and I don't remember. So obviously you want this, this thing to engage in that right there. Now is it gonna split that difference and grab just a little bit of the, uh, key here and a little bit of the key there. I don't know. So let's put the key in. And see what we get. Okay, so that was a bit of a, a battle. So yeah, it looks like this part right here and this share of the key. So we'll get this tapped on. 
and then we'll get the, uh, the, the lockdown screw on that. Let me go tap this on. Okay, we got that on. So we'll get this threaded in. Sorry guys. Can't see where the end of this camera is. So I don't have a uh, spanner that size, so what I use is two eighth inch drills, drop them in those holes and just put a little crank on them. So I'm gonna go get some drills. All right, so I messed with the uh, lighting a little bit so that uh, you can maybe get a little bit better picture. I have the uh, hand wheel clamped down in my vise with uh, some rags uh, around it, you know, cushioning the uh, jaws against the, uh, the gears. So what I'll do, I mentioned before, a couple eighth inch um, drill bits, put in this, uh, this nut. And so what I like to do is I'll just come around like this and just give it a little tug Oop, tighten it up a little bit more these holes are a little wallowed out from probably years of people wrenching on these things there's lots of marks on it but it's really not going to go anywhere so we got this installed uh let me give you a quick tour of it as we had mentioned before and how it works. So if we have this threaded out, we don't have our dial locked in. So now this right here can spin free. So you can set your numbers and whatever you want to set your dial at. And you can go in or out as you need. You can lock this. So now I can't spin the, I can't spin this, these two things apart from each other, right? That it's locked in. So now if I wanted to do threading, I'm going to thread this, I'm going to screw this stop in here, right? So now we're at zero. That would be all the way out. And now I'm going to crank it in one, two, three, and it stops. And it stops right on zero. So I can quickly come out, boom, it stops, quickly go back in, and it stops. And this is the thing that... Uh, Chuck on uh, the channel Outside Screwball was talking about. Um, so you saw previously the assembly that goes inside here that actually makes this functionality work. So it's pretty neat. So we're going to go put this on the lathe. All right, back at the lathe. See, we have the O-ring in place right here. And we're going to take this assembly. Got our zero or, you know, our line line up there and we'll get this thing on here okay all right so now we have that engaged we have a couple quarter 20 bolts in here i'm not going to tighten these down right now other than hand tight just see how everything is going to work so obviously without the, um, the assembly all locked down with the uh, taper attachment, we, we don't have a, uh, you know, it's not um, all connected. So I, I have to put pressure here to bring it back. Right, so that's how that works. So. Now that the whole thing is on there, I can show you what I'm talking about. If I come over here and I'm, I'm going to lock on my zero right there, okay, and I'm going to screw this guy in. So I'm at zero, zero. So you can see how that works. So you're in, you made your threading pass, you come out. You come to the beginning of the work, you thread it back in, or crank it back in till you get to zero. You turn your uh, compound to 5,000 that you want. You engage your half nut, carriage runs in, and then you bring it back out. Anyway, 
that's this on the uh, piece on the cross slide. So now uh, we'll, we're finished up with that and we're gonna move on to the taper attachment. So there's a lot of work to do there. There's way wipers to put in. There's all kinds of uh, bearings we gotta put in and assembly, so we'll get that thing going. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll bring you back when uh, we start on the taper attachment. Thanks.